and look at uh, the last two slides uh, talking about bee trees. Uh, what, what's the bee in bee tree, by the way? What's the standard? Well, it's not binary because, I mean, you can have six or eight you know, child nuggets. Dan? Best. Best. Eh, it's actually pretty good. So bee best, not a bad bee. It's a balanced tree. Um, although some people also lose the mind, it was uh, originally developed uh, from folks at Boeing. So they say, oh, it's, it's B is for Boeing, but actually it's intended to be for balance. Um, and, uh, and it's actually very fast, so it's all, you know, best might also work. Okay, um, <clears throat> so again, you've got a uh, tree, so there's no, no loops in it. Um, each node has potentially one or more keys to it. And, you know, if you've got several nodes, I'd say we've got three things here. And I've got a, a five, a 12, and a 20. What that means is if it's less than five, you're going to go here. If it's between five and 12, you're going to go here. If it's between 12 and 20, you're going to go here. If it's greater than 20, you're going to go here. Okay? So, um, in any case, you've got this many uh, keys in here, then there's going to end up being uh, that many keys plus one options. Okay. In uh, any case, you actually you have to have at least one key here at each node. Um, the root node is sort of a weird node because, of course, you can start off with an empty node and you can start adding and subtracting things there. But for the rest of the time, um, uh, you've got your, your things set up. So when you start to add something, you go ahead and say, oh, um, if I'm adding a seven, well, seven is not less than five, so I know it's not over here, but seven is between 12, five and 12, so you're gonna put it down here. And you'd go here and you'd say, oh, well, you know, where do I put it here? Let's say we have a, a 6 and a 10. So then you just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to put it between 6 and 10. So I'll have 6, 7, and 10. Um, in any case, the whole idea is that unlike some trees that you create depth first, um, pretty much you're going to have the same number of, um, you know, uh, everything's going to be at this, this level here, okay? You're not going to have six levels deep here and just two levels deep here. Uh, the nice thing about this is that it's going to be fairly fast, right? So if you think about it, if I've got, um, let's say, six nodes here, if you want to find where something is, you're going to say, okay, I've got a seven. Where am I going to put it? Is it the left up here? So I have one comparison there, right? Or if else, is it left up here? Else, is it left up here? Or you'd actually do the equals. So you're only going to have to do, you know, three to six compares, right? Well, let's say we can have six things here. Now let's just pull this up to a calculator. six keys in there, right? And let's say I've got eight levels deep. Okay? So if we so we're gonna have to go to the scientific calculator and we're gonna say six to the eight. So we can have a million files, right? If we've got a six things, six keys here and eight levels deep, how many comparisons is it going to take to find that one file we're looking for in a million files? Well, in one respect, at most, it's going to take six for this level, right? And then six for this level, 
in the six for this level. How many levels do we have? Eight levels, right? So six times eight? 48 comparisons to find one file out of a million files. That's not too bad. And if you think about it, half the time, am I going to have to check every single one of these? No. In general, I'm going to have to take how, check how many of these. Well, I'm sorry, the, the, the case was we're doing six. In the case of six, we're going to have to test three of them. So I found three of them, oh, I go down this loop. And of the eight, how many levels on average are we gonna have to check? Four. So how many comparisons on average? Twelve comparisons to find one file out of a million. That's not bad, right? And the whole idea is, you know, we've been talking about we're creating this file system, right? And so we know how to we have to add things and subtract things and create things. And one of the things is LS. I want to search. I want to find a file, right? And if we've got a million files, uh, if we do a linear search, on average, I'm going to have to do a half a million comparisons to find it. So that's not a good idea. And we can do binary search and we can do all that. But binary search, you have to sort it and blah, blah, blah. A B tree is a nice, easy, fairly compact way of going out there and, and finding something. And an average of 12 searches for many things. Does that make sense? Alright. So B trees are cool. Let's get rid of this. Alright. So you get at least one key. Um key node's gonna have the same number of maximum keys. They're stored in non-decreasing order. So each one of these things is sorted, but I mean you only got six things. That's pretty easy to sort, right? And all the leaf nodes are on the same level. You don't have, you know, six levels here and three levels here. Nodes is going to make a big difference, right? Because if we only have two things here, then it's going to be two to the sixth, not too many, right? If we have six things here, then we get almost a million in eight. If you have 24 things, then you're going to have a much shorter tree, but you have to check 24 things each time. And in some of these nodes, like here, I've only got one thing stored, so it's one out of eight. So that's, you sort of have to find a balance between how many things you want in each node and, you know, what space saving that you get. So in any case, there's going to be something called the decree. How many things are in each one of these things? Well, in order to keep it balanced, you have to go ahead and uh, there are a couple of rules. There's going to be a minimum number of keys at each level and then a maximum number of keys at each level. Obviously, the max is however many things you, you add in here. So if I'm going to add something in here, if I only have three slots, and I've got something that ends up being like a 26, well, I can't add it here, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to either add a new level, or I'm going to have to rearrange a few things. All right. So anyways, um, so let's actually look at how do I rearrange things. So if we go to here, let's just kill that. So this is a little thing um, that they put out there that helps you visualize how to do things. All right, so we're going to go ahead and insert some things. And so let's say I insert 10, and boom.
So let's go ahead and set our max degree five, and then we're going to go ahead and insert in a um, in a toilet pin, and so this puts it in there. Then we're going to insert a note twenty, and it's going to put it right next to it. We insert a note thirty and forty. Fifty. Now notice, as soon as we hit fifty, we can't have five things because our degree is five. So the maximum number of things you can have each one is five minus one, or four. So what we have to do is we say we can't fit them all on one level. So we're going to have to go to two levels. So what you do is you put everything that you're going to deal with, all five of those, in sorted order. You pick the middle one. That's going to become the root and you put two on this side and two on that side, right? So let's keep on going here. So now we're gonna go ahead and add a 60. So where's 60 gonna go? Well, we're gonna look up here and we're gonna say, okay, well, is 30 less than 60? Nope. Is it equal? No. Is it greater than? Yes, so it's gonna have to go over here. Can we insert a 60 into that leaf node? It currently has a 40 and a 50. Yes, because the degree is five, which means we have up to four things in each leaf node, right? So we're just going to end up adding it, we're going to add it on the end. So if we do an add 60, it will take this leaf node over here and make it 40, 50, 60, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Do an insert. Boom. 40, 50, 60. Now if we put a 70, what's going to happen? So go to the right, it's going to say, hey, can I add this? Well, there's only four things, degree is five, so we can add it. So boom, it's going to put it on the end. Now, if I put an 80, what's going to happen? It's going to go to the right, it's going to go down here, it's going to try and put it in there, and it's going to go, uh-oh, I have too many things, right? So it's going to take the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and say, of those five things, what's the middle one? 60, right? So I'm going to put the 40 and the 50 to the left, the 70 and the 80 to the right, and I'm going to keep the 60 as my parent node, and the other one's moved down. Let's go ahead and do an insert of 80. Okay? Now, if we had just moved it down, that would have violated our, wait a minute, everything's not the same level, right? So instead it says, oh, wait a minute, what if we shove that whole thing up to the root above it? Because there's only one thing in the root above it, right? So then we took that 80 and we moved it up to the one above it. Does that make sense? All right. So let's keep going with the example. So we're going to do a 90. Where's 90 going? Well, it's more than 80. So it's going to go over here. It's actually 70, 80, 90. That's only three, so we should be able to add it in. So there, goes to the right. We add in 100, is that okay? Where's it going? The right bottom leaf, all right? Now, if we do 110, what's gonna happen? Okay, it's gonna say, oh wait, there's too many. So we're gonna split it. So 70, 80 are gonna be in one. 100 and 110 are gonna be in the other. And then 90 is gonna be above those two. But we don't want to go down a level, we're going to go back up. So 90 will be next to 60. We'll have 70, 80, 100, 110. Making sense? All right. So let's do one more set here. Um, matter of fact, I think we can go all the way to 116 to see what everybody wants to see. 110. So let's just say uh, one more one. When I do a one, one, three, what happens? Split it and move up. Okay. One, one, four. This goes to the end. One, one, five. And one, one, six, what happens? We've got four here, right? 
we add 116, that makes it 5. We can't do that. So we're going to put the one, uh, 12 and 13 here, the uh, 15 and 16 here, the 14 is going to go up, but uh-oh, that means that level now has 5. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to split that top one. And so 90 is going to go up, and then the 15 and uh, 16 are going to go to the side. So let's see what happens. 116. Does everybody understand this? Could you do it on a piece of paper? So if we did a 15, where's it going to go? Just the 15. So is it less than 90? We're going to go left. Is it less than 30? We're going to go left. So do we have room to insert it here? All right, cool. So is that a 15? All right. Adds everybody's good with, right? Great. Now let's try a remove. If I go ahead and remove 20, what's going to happen? So I would say, is 20 less than 90? Yep. Is it less than 30? Yep. I'm here. Did I find it? Yep. I'm going to remove this. Are we still valid? Yeah. Because we said there's an upper limit. You can't have more than four. There's also a lower limit. Yeah. So what, what's going to happen is we see if we remove 20, it's not a problem. It goes down, goes down, and removes it. Let me slow this down just a little bit. What's going to happen if we remove four? We're going to end up violating that minimum. So let's say 40, delete. So notice it says, hey, it's left, it goes here, it's right, it goes here. We delete 40. Uh oh, now we're to one. So we've got to go ahead and redo. Yeah, that's too fast. Yeah, let me try this So if I add up, uh, if I remove 41, it's not a big deal, right? Um, I'm just going to close it. We still have two there. If I remove 40 and 41, we now have a problem, OK? But the nice thing is we can go ahead and let me just do that. We're going to remove 41. So it's going to go down. It's going to go down. It's going to find it. And say, okay, I can remove it. I'm still valid. Done. Now, if you try to remove 40, it's going to say, uh oh, I only have one here. So I'm going to try and merge these three nodes here. Okay? So I've got the 10, the 15, the 17, the 30, and the 50. Between those five, what's the middle? 17. So what I can do is I can move 17 up, I can move 30 down. And I'll have two here, two here, and one there. So let's remove 40 and see if that's what happens. So it looks and 
looks, it goes down, it finds it, it deletes it, it says, uh-oh, let me move that one up and that one down, and now I'm still balanced. Okay? So just like when we added, when I said, hey, there's five things here, or there's four things here, I added five, I look at those five, I take the middle one, that becomes the root, this one goes left and this one goes right, same thing here. When that point to just one, then I take these, that, and this, add them together, and make sure everything's okay. Well, the problem was, if we now delete 30, okay, so what's gonna, go, what's gonna happen? It's gonna look, look, so that here, it's gonna delete 30. It's gonna say, oh, I only have one thing here, right? Well, so let's combine everything. So we're gonna take our 10, 15, 17, and 30. It's gonna take the middle one, which is 15, right? It's gonna move the 15 up, and we're gonna have 10, uh, 17, and 50 on the left-hand side. But oh, we're still in a bad state, right? Because we've got one here and two here. So we actually have to go ahead and go up one more step and say, hey, um, let's go ahead and take the 10, 15, uh, 17 and 50 combined with the 90. So it puts all of those together and you'll see it actually collapses down. So when we delete 90, delete this one. Again, we're gonna look, look, we're gonna find it, we're gonna delete it, we're gonna go, hey, these five things here, but wait a minute, that dropped us down to one thing here, which meant we had to combine all those five and go up. Uh, so, is everybody good with adding? Is that fairly easy? You have to, you can break? No. And again, let's say we added 17. It's just going to go on the end, right? No problem. If we add 18, Go on the end. If we add a 19, what's going to happen? Okay, so we add a 19, so we'll have 5 here, so we're going to take the 15 and the 18 and 19 here, and the 17 moves up. But what does that mean for the root node? How many does it have in it now? As five. So we're going to have to split it. And which one's going to go up? 11. 11. So if we had in 19. 19. Again, it's going to search, it's going to find it, it's going to add it. So if there's a problem, it moves up, has a problem, so it splits the middle. As long as you can do additions, but realize you may have to split which may cause a ripple effect. If you can do two levels of addition, that won't be mean to make you do two levels of subtraction, but at least one level of removal, okay, maybe combine things together, then you can find the thing. Any questions on this? What's the advantage of this? It's fast, right? What's one of the disadvantages? Well, if you think about the implementation of this, every one of these nodes has to have how many pointers in it? The maximum of five in this case, right? So up there at the root node, I've got five pointers allocated. How many of them are, am I actually using? Okay, so I'm only using 40% of that space. I allocated it, but I'm not using it all, right? Well, because of the way this is set up, um, I'm only using 40% here. I'm using, you know, uh, what? Five, two, three, four, five, six, percent uh, here, and then maybe 80 percent here. So in total, on average, about half of my tree is in, you know, it's, it's unused space. 
So it's not, it's not the most space efficient, but search-wise, it's super efficient. And doing an insert, I mean, typically, you're gonna do one, two, three compares, maybe another six, and then you either split it or don't. So I mean, it's fairly quick, fairly short routine. Okay, well, good news is, that's now the end of the chapter. Therefore, we should have a test. Everybody ready? You don't want to have a test today? No. Okay, how about next Thursday? Is there a problem with that? No, yeah, we're not going to be So I guess that means the test has to be win. So to make things easier, I have opened all the notes. So y'all can look at all of them. Uh, all the notes. I only opened, what, four and so this is uh, five input and output, and then the other one is and we did file systems and input and output. Okay, so there's only two files you have to worry about: the file systems and input and output. The two sets of slides. Um, if we look at this, let's just look, oh, you can't see it. Let's go to this again, slideshow, from the beginning. <coughs> so in 15 minutes or less, um, when we talk about file systems, you know, the whole idea is virtualization, right? We want to go ahead and say, hey, here's a file. And we're going to go ahead and save that out there. And we're going to save that under a disk because we don't want to actually have it in memory. Okay, it's too expensive to have every single file we ever want already in memory. So we're going to put it out on disk or on flash or on backup or whatever. Um, and so in order to survive, we're going to have that information out there. You can think of it logically as, hey, it's this one long linear sequence of, of uh, records. But there's some problems with that, right? If you want record 900, then you have to read through every one of those. So you like this whole random access thing, right? Um, we talked about extensions, we won't ask anything about that. So you could have sequences of records, you actually have sequences of bytes, or you could have a tree. And we just figured out, and then we know that which one's more efficient? The tree. So that's probably the way we're going to go. With any file type, you're going to have some header information, and then other things. Some of the header information is going to be the type of the file, how long is the file, the actual data and maybe even some uh, error check, you know, cyclic redundancy codes, things like that. Uh, obviously, you can do sequential or random. What are some of the operations we're gonna need? We're gonna need to create files, delete files, open files, close files. We wanna be able to read, write, and append, and seek. So all these are things you're all familiar with. You're also probably gonna wanna be able to get some of those attributes, so that, because we're thinking file systems, hey, I need to find out, does the person have permissions? Okay, you read this file. Is it read-only? Is it read-write? Obviously, uh, we don't just want files. We want, you know, hierarchy of files. So we're gonna have directories and subdirectories and sub-subdirectories. So if you're an operating system programmer, you have to be able to handle that. Some people went one way, hey, we're gonna have some certain fixed directories. Other folks say, hey, Anything goes, right? Obviously, that's logically how we do it. Now, physically, it's going to be divided onto sectors and tractor, uh, tractor okay. tracks and sectors, platters, um, and because of that, and the fact that you've got one head reading on each platter, um, you've got two times that are going to affect things. And those two times are. Time to get the head from the head to track one to track 100, which is seek time, and the time for the disk to spin around, which is the latency. Okay. Might want to know terms like sector and track and seek and latency. Those would be easy questions to put on an exam. Um, again, we're thinking hey, I've got this huge disk. So physically, I've got one huge disk. 
logically, we could virtualize that thing and make it look like I've got three data sources, right? I've got a C and a D and an F. In order to do that, we've got to be able to partition that uh, hard drive. Okay? And so we can go ahead and say, hey, here's the master record that says how many partitions there are. And in there, we can say partition A is this long, you know, my C drive is this big with this many sectors and tracks. And my D drive is you know, this long. And so you can virtually have multiple disks when you physically only have one. Obviously, when you allocate, you can use allocation, yay! Maximizes space initially. And the problem is, when you start deleting things, you have holes, fragments, files can't fit in files, bad. How do you fix that? Eat frags one way, or don't have continuous files. You know, Be able to segment that file into little chunks. I got this chunk here and that chunk there. Well, to do that, now you can't just say, my file starts here and it's this big, read it. Now you go, oh, my file starts here and I'll read a little bit and then my file starts over there and I'm gonna read it, which means you have to have a You've got to have some sort of data structure, right? Maybe it's a fact table, maybe it's a linked list, maybe it's a whatever, right? So, and again, there's our contiguous, our compaction. Link list allocation is a way to do that, right? And so you just have this, um, my file, my block, at the beginning of every block is the, hey, where's the next one? Or this is the end. Another way to do that would be a uh, file allocation table. So I actually have an array over here that says, hey, I'm, I'm starting at seven, I mean, I'm starting at block four, and it points to seven, seven points to two, two points to 10, 10 points to 12, 12 says I'm done. Of course, the problem with this one is, well, I'm done somewhere in, uh, I'm going to 14, 14, not 12, right. So I'm, I'm done somewhere in here, but do I want to read one byte of 12? Or do I read all of them? So that's why we still have to have that file length. So that we say, oh, I read this chunk and this chunk and this chunk. Three times that chunk size, that block size, that sector size, um, minus the total says how many of that last one is actually not. Um, otherwise, you can complete it. Inodes. We talked about inodes. Did everybody see the message that went out that had the two YouTube links? Did we get a chance to look at those? I would look at those, because there's probably at least one question on the test about inodes. The whole idea is um, you've got this linked list, and the first few are going to point to the data blocks, right? But that's only going to give you 12 or 15 data blocks. If you've got more than 12 or 15 data blocks, what do you have to do? You have to have a second level of indirection. So now I've got 12 in this block, and then maybe 12 in this one, and 12 in this one, and 12 in this one, right? Um, so you're pretty much going to have a question on there, something like, hey, if you've got 10 pointers and then two indirects, Right? And you only can go one level, so you know it's either you're at this level, or you're at this level, or this level. So you've got 10 here, and then two possible second levels, and then 10 here, and then 10 here. How many total can you now do? Third, right? So there's going to be obviously different numbers. Something like that. If you've got a two level and 10 and two, how many can you get max? So there'll be a question like that on there. All right, obviously you could put everything in the record, and so I have a record here for this directory and a record here for this directory. The problem is some of that information is fixed. You know, the size is a, you know, a double. It's 16 or, 32 or 64 bits. Um, but the name might be variable. So either you have to allocate the absolute maximal number for every single one of those, or you have a pointer to a heap, right? And that was the example here. In this case, it's fixed. So you have to allocate a lot more. In this case, you've got the fixed part up here, and then you pointer down to 
uh, it has a variable length that allows you to have variable length file names and not waste a lot of space. Sharing. What's the problem with sharing? You don't actually delete it whenever like, two people have access to an actual little bit. You just like mark one, I don't know, person sees the directory, but if they don't have or that it's deleted for them, but they don't have to delete something you actually delete it. Um, speaking of which, when you do an LS in Unix, um, especially an LS dash L, you see all these R, X, W, W, X, R, X, R, W. What, what is that? The directory permissions. The directory permissions, right? So, and so what are the three sets? Read. Well, I mean, there's read, write, and not, right? Those are the three options. But you've got three here, three here, and three here. What are the three sets? Excellent. Have you actually made a presentation yet? Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody who has not made a presentation? Okay. Would you like to give a two-minute presentation on what those things are and how they're set and how they're used? Sure. Okay. Who else has not made a presentation yet? Okay. Would either of y'all like to do the same kind of thing? How do, how do they do it in Windows? In Windows? In Windows. What permissions? Yeah. Permissions in Windows? Yeah. I can do that. Okay. So, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, again, you've got your permissions, like as the, the owner or the creator, um, but there's also group permissions, where you can have groups, so anybody in this group is allowed, and you know, if you want to go fancy, you can say, hey, this is how you can actually say, here's how you set a password on a directory, so unless you know that, you can't get into it, so whatever you can get in two minutes or less. All right, so moving on. Oh, and can you share files? And then how do you deal with deleting some share files? Okay. Obviously, if you've got a disk, we talked about, well, where are the files? We also need to talk about where aren't the files, and that's our free list, right? We've got to figure out what's there. There's a couple ways to do that. File access, which is why we're giving the, y'all are giving the two talks, and the trees. That's basically everything from that section. Are there questions? What was difficult? What gave y'all problems? But if you think about it, the questions are going to be some terminology and then maybe some calculations. Hey, do a B tree. If this is your B tree and you inserted this number, what's going to happen? If here's your B tree and you delete a number, what's going to happen? Was this the section that had the rate level? Uh, like no, that's the next one. Give me five minutes. So you're going to probably have a B tree. Um, how do you deal with free stuff? How do you deal with shared things? An inode, I guarantee, is going to be on there. Probably a fat file allocation table. Be one of those examples. And then just the idea of, hey, what are the problems? You know, if you have contiguous, if you have non-contiguous, what are the advantages and disadvantages? So that's pretty much that whole one. So let's get up here. Here, we'll go to this one. All right, I/O. Um, we talked about different kinds of devices, okay? Um, you know, keyboards and standards and all those kind of things. Um, we said, hey, look, you know, obviously you could write everything yourself, but that seems so silly. Instead, let's move that uh, away from the CPU, so the CPU is not spending time waiting for the keyboard. Let's go ahead and uh, have somebody else uh, deal with that, whether it's a controller, whether it's directly access, uh, et cetera. So now we've got a second step here. We've got the DMA controller. So the CPU says, hey, handle it. And the CPU or the DMA controller now goes over and hits the disk. And maybe the disk controller uh, either hits the disk correctly, directly, or you've got another level of indirection. You've got a disk controller. And the disk controller can then say, okay, now I'm going to get the drive. The nice thing is now you can go ahead and start sending multiple requests. It can buffer those requests and do them, and then it's ready. Then it sends back and says, hey, we got it. And it sends back an interrupt and says, hey, we got what you wanted for. It swaps out the process and says, okay, now, I'll deal with it. Everybody good on that one? 
So you got DMA, you got program.io, you've got interrupt group. Know the three, know the significant differences. And again, the slides are now there, so just look at them, look them up if you're not sure, ask questions if you're not sure, go on from there. We talked about interrupts, you go ahead and interrupt uh, you. Instead of waiting for the whatever to do thing, you just go ahead and say, hey, you go do your thing, I'm gonna continue working, and then you interrupt me when you're done. That way you're not sitting there waiting, wasting CPU cycles. We talked about, hey, every different device is gonna have different potential um, uh, APIs on it, different uh, characteristics, so they're all gonna have different calls. Well, that's horrible if you're writing the software and you've gotta write it one way for this flash drive and another way for that flash drive. One way for this monitor, one way for that keyboard. I mean, obviously they all have the same standard interface, and so that's part of the way that uh, things are not written. We talked about buffering, and you can have buffers in different places. Um, it wastes more space, but it's um, potentially more efficient. We talked about cycling through the buffers. We talked about, hey, here's our disk, and here's the geometry of the disk. And so if we're going to store something here, we can put things in blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's cool, except if we need to read things, maybe we want to offset them a little bit so that by the time things circle around, we go out and get the next instruction, we come back, the thing we want didn't just pass under, uh, out of the reading range. Uh, another thing is, okay, this failed, okay? And so what happens when a sector fails? Well, we can make a copy of it, um, and so now we have to have, here's a file and here's a file. Or maybe here's a disk and here's a disk. So every time I write, I write to this one and I write to that one. So now, if one of them goes bad, you're still okay, you've got a copy of it, right? But for X amount of memory, you know, if I've got a terabyte, two terabyte drives, if I don't do RAID, how much information can I store? If I have two one terabyte drives. No, no, if I'm not doing any RAID, nothing. If I just have two terabyte drives, how much can I store? Two terabytes. If I'm making an exact duplicate and I have two terabyte drives, how much can I store? One terabyte. So the advantage is you have uh, redundancy. So if something goes bad, you can copy it over. The disadvantage is it took twice the amount of memory to physical memory to have your virtual one terabyte that's safe. Okay, um, so one of the things is, oh, well, hey, what if we go ahead and say, um, we're going to go ahead and not just say, here's my bit, one, two, three, four, five, uh, I'm sorry, one through eight, zero through seven, yeah, zero through seven, and then here's my next zero through seven, and here's my next zero through seven. What if I said, I'm going to spread those across different disks? Okay. So, I still have, in this case, four one terabyte drives. I still have four terabytes of information, but it's spread over four different drives, okay? So if one goes down, I've only lost um, potentially one fourth of my information, right? Which is like, well, I still lost it, right? But if we also have a parity bit, okay? So if I lost this, and through parity, I can build it back, then I'm much better off, right? And so we went to the whole thing of, hey, we can stripe it, we can stripe it to double it. Um, we can go ahead and um, put parity bits on there. We can put parity bits on one disk. We can put parity bits across multiple disks. Um, blah, blah, blah. So we get to this table. If you're gonna look at anything, glance at the other ones and sort of figure out, yeah, I sort of know what stripe, uh, the, you know, striping is. I know what parity bits are. As long as you have those concepts in mind, then this is the table you want to look at, okay? What's gonna happen, you know, if you're just doing non-redundant? Well, what happens to your, your actual task? It's the largest, right? Because you have access to all bits, all two terabytes or four terabyte drives. So you're gonna have your largest data IO capacity. Um, but, you know, obviously, you've got, 
problems in that if anything goes wrong, everything goes wrong, right? Um, if you uh, put stripes so that, hey, this strip of data is here, and this is strip of data here, and this strip of data is here, and I want to read something um, that's you know, six strips long, or four strips long, if I have a single disk, how long would it take to read four strips? Four time slices, right? But if I've got those four strips across four different CPUs, or four different uh, hard drives, how many time units does it take to read them? No, just one, because these are four different disks. So if I have to read a file that's four long, four units long, I can say, hey, this one, you send me strip one. And this two, you send me strip two. And three, you send me strip three. You send me strip four. All four of those can go out simultaneously because those four disks are different, right? So it pulls it into the DMA controller. The DMA controller says, okay, now I've got strip one, two, three, and four. Hey, CPU, i got all four in one time cycle, right? Instead of taking, hey, this one, I need one, and then two, and then three, and then four. That's going to take four time cycles. So if you've got four of them running in parallel, it's four times as fast, right? So by stripping it, now all of a sudden you can get uh, four times faster, eight times faster. Um, so, anyways, just basically look through here, roughly know what are the levels, okay? You know, what did each one add? You know, this one added mirroring, this one added that the redundancy codes. You know, this one had interleaving. And they'll, great. So this was the cool thing they added. And then what was the advantage? What was the disadvantage? If you know that, you should be good. And yes, there's going to be at least, well, there's going to be one, I think one great question on this. All right. You should know the seek, and you should know latency, and why is it important? Okay, so if I were, if I were to read continuously, then I can just read this one, this one, this one, this one as it cycles under the head, right? But now we've got this problem of, well, it's continuous, so I'm going to have fragmentation and all that. So we've already decided, hey, we've got to put things all over the place, right? Well, if we put things completely all over the place, then I read this one, and I've got to seek to this one. And then I'm going to wait for it to run around. And then I'm going to go to this one, so I have to seek back here and wait for it to go around. So completely random is not good. It would be better if we had like, you know, one, two, three, and then maybe four, five, six, and then maybe seven, eight, nine, right? So just have the idea that you want to minimize that head seeking back and forth, right? And you'd like to minimize that latency time. So, you know, if you read this one and you know the next one I want to read is this one, figure out how long this one is going to take to get here, and how long it's going to get to that instruction. So if you can have it just offset enough that it's just riding under the head when you want to read it. That's going to be the best, right? So, you got to go ahead and figure out how can we do that? Well, cylinder skew, we're going to you know, offset it a bit. So by the time it goes up one, you know, if we're reading this one, we read this whole track, and now we've got to go to the next one, we're going to put all these in order, or we don't want to put them immediately, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, because it's going to take some time to seek in. So we almost want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then up, and then as it's moving up, these will take down, and now we're gonna put 9, 10, 11, 12, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then something, 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 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So as it's moving, things work. So just know that one thing is cylinder skew. Then we can also do interleaving, but, This might be another good question here. But the whole deal is now it's back to our same thing, scheduling algorithms, right? Just like we said, hey, we've got a shortest job first or the, um, the um, priority job first or the this, you know, we had all those different scheduling algorithms, but we've got the same kind of thing here. So we can go ahead and say, hey, first in, first out, priority, LIFO, Shortest seek time, uh, scan, C scan, etc. So this is the next one I would look at. So there's two charts here, in addition to the terms like technology, kind of seek and trend, uh, translation, latency. Um, 
I would look at this one. What is the advantage of FICO? What is the advantage of shorter scalp curve? Scan or CC? Um, obviously, errors is going to occur. So what do you do? Well, let's leave a couple of spare sectors out there, and we can mark them as um, invalid. Now, of course, to keep things in order, we'd have to move everything over and put the other one back here, or we can just have a little linked list that handle all that. So a lot of times you're going to do is you're going to have an uh, error checking code that says, hey, this one isn't quite right. We, need, we know it's not bad. We'll go ahead and get the valid copy. We're going to bring it in. We're going to mark this sector as bad. Now we're going to do it. Uh, again, if you do have two disks, how do you know, you know if it crashed happening in the middle of a write, what do you do? So this is the whole idea. It depends on when the crash occurred between the two writes. And that's it. All right. So sanity check time. We actually looked at this one last time. So if you've got two, a, two KB clusters and all your files are one KB, how much is uh, wasted on average? A half. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Here's our old IO thing. You know, if you've got blocks and you know, seven things, and the last one is an indirect, how much the maximum can do. We did that one the other day. Um, so we've got the fat example, where, hey, we're starting at seven, which ones would we have to read? Well, obviously, we start at seven, Eight pointers eight, eight pointers nine, nine eight is the left. So I'm gonna have to be in um, seven, eight, nine in this case. Um, and we're gonna be the full seven, the full eight, and only part of nine. And that part of nine is based on that size and bytes. Uh, so we could ask things like, you know, which one's the order? 79, we can tell you this the other day. And what the side B tree. So if we have a B tree like this, and we add that to <laughs> where's it gonna go? After here. What what does that mean? It's too big, so we're gonna have to split it. Blah blah blah. If we subtract about 32, what's gonna happen? We go to the minimum, right? So we're going to have to add 2, 10, 23, and 30. Well, and then what's the middle one? 10, that would be times 2. It's just going to have to do all the way up and all that. I won't make you do one of those. I'll probably do one of these. So if you do 45, it just goes to 45. Uh, let's In. The larger your cluster size, the faster you're going to read things in, but the more space you're placing, right? All right, boom. All right. Um, so if you had a four drives, 200 gigabytes per drive, um, how much storage capability? Would you have four <coughs> rate levels, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six? Okay. Um, and then maybe, what is the advantage of RAID six over RAID zero? Something like that. And again, the other way that I could ask the uh, B tree question is something like this. Hey, here's the sequence of numbers. Go ahead and create a B tree and then RAID two. And you just make the tree. 
Yeah, potentially that's a lot of writing. Uh, so I like that question as much as the, hey, here's a tree. What's the one change if you delete this one? Or what's the one change if you add that? Okay, so that's a rough idea of what you'll find on the test. Questions? Questions on the homework? Can we do the homework so far? Is the Dropbox open for, again for the last one? I thought so. Give me 30 seconds. I'll check. 